today we have the honor of being graced by a beauty queen literally ladies and gentlemen a beauty queen from her head to her toe Madeline Cherito Miss World Africa 2017 is here in studio it's so good to have you look at you the way you sit it's so poised and so elegant some of us just sit like you know but you are like do you were you taught that did you? Yes, yes, uh -huh. but you just have to learn a lot. You just have to perfect mm -hmm. everything you do yeah. because you're a lady. You're a lady. You do, but do you sit like that at restaurants as well? Yes. Or when you're in meetings? Yes. Really? Just, every time it's upright, upright again. Oh, as but your back doesn't get tired? No. Ah. You All right. All right, you are yeah. gorgeous looking. Thank it's good you. to have you here. Look at the crown, marvelous crown. Tomorrow you're handing it yeah. to your next, to the next person. Yeah. How do you feel? Um, mixed feelings or other, yeah. because, you know, handing over something that you've been with it for like a whole year, yeah. you get that attachment and all that. But again, I would like to give someone an opportunity to experience right. the feeling. What yeah. would you say that you've been able to accomplish? Because when I spoke to you earlier during the year when you got the crown, yeah. you said tourism was something close to your heart. Yes. Then. yes. Have you been able to accomplish the things you wanted to do with your title? Exactly. And that's why I'm saying passing over, like, Crowning the next person will be so hard for me yeah. because it has been a very, it has opened my doors. It has been a very good platform, especially in my tourism world, because I am a, my background is tourism, yeah. is in tourism. I've been, I'm currently work with Kenya Tourism Board as a marketing officer, and also I've been able to travel a lot. You're right. Oh, yes. the traveling a lot. Yes. Which country was I've your been, favorite? Uh, my favorite actually was, uh, I have three. Indonesia because of their food. Ooh. I've been uh, to China, uh -huh. China because of their culture, of course, and their scenic beauties, yeah. as well as um, India. India was beautiful too. India was beautiful. Yes. Uh, India. But will you get to continue with your work this advent after your reign? Exactly. Yeah, because you know, after beauty pageant, now you have your own life. You, right. You know, you have to have something going on with your life. And you'll, yeah, get, so that you'll go like back to career, focusing uh, on your career? Exactly. Yeah. Wow, but that's going to be a major shift. It's yeah, exactly you see, but the problem, the good thing is, uh, as long as you're sorted, or, or rather, as long as you plan yourself well, you have a focus in life. Mm -hmm. There's nothing, pro there, there's nothing big or major about it, about the transformation. Will this be the last time you've seen Mag Magdalene Cheruto in terms of being a beauty queen? Or will you still want to do things within this industry? Okay, modeling actually has been part of me for a while, yeah. for like five years now. So I don't think I'll be, I'll, I'll, I'll just like drop it like after tomorrow. Yeah. It's something that is going on, something mm -hmm. that I'll continue doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not in beauty pageant world, but uh, high fashion mm -hmm. as well as commercial. But for beauty pageant, I'll just love to nurture girls, mm. especially girls from humble backgrounds mm. yeah what are some of the challenges that within um the beauty industry industry rather especially what you as beauty queens mm. face specifically okay just like any other industry uh, in the world it has its own challenges mm -hmm. and of course advantages and all that but the main challenge i think is especially in kenya it's underpay and exploitation right because uh I'm sure you've seen that. It's yes. trending a lot. Yes. Because uh, for models, you know, we were, most of the time we don't get like uh, the right uh, channels. And uh, sometimes you get jobs, but you don't get paid well. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're just given uh, promises or for exposure and all that. Mm -hmm. So I think that is the, like, the main challenge. Yes. You know, exploitation as well. Exploitation. Yeah. You're yeah. right, because on Weekend Express on Saturday, yeah. we had the CEO of In Vogue, yeah. and she said a lot of the things that are really um, eating into the beauty um, world, pageant, especially for models here in Kenya, mm -hmm. both male and female, yeah. is that the exploitation. A lot yeah. of them do, do not even know how to exactly. read a contract, yeah. what to ask for your contract, exactly, yeah. how to be paid. Yeah, that is actually the main challenge, because, you know, when you, when you, when you get into an industry blindly, or rather without knowing the right... The right uh, points or other the right channels to use, you you don't understand how to go about it. Mm -hmm. Especially when you get approached from big companies, you don't know how to handle the whole thing. And unless we educate our models, unless we give them an opportunity, we train them, mm -hmm. just like any other model. Mm -hmm. yeah, all right, what about the opportunities out there? I'm oh, sure it's not all uh, dark and, and sad. Like I said earlier, it has its own uh, like challenges and everything, but uh, I think the positive part is bigger mm -hmm. compared to the negative. Because mm -hmm. for me, it has been like a very, very good learning experience. Right. And a door opener. Um, I've been able to meet people in my life that have like, it was a dream, uh, traveling all the way to India to meet the Prime Minister of India, um, meeting the Chinese politi or, or influential politicians, as well as meeting the other girls from mm. different countries. So those are like 
lifetime opportunities. Right. It's not in terms of getting money or opening your doors or anything, mm -hmm. but just the connection, mm -hmm. the network that you get from people, the influence, the impact that they make in your life. And apart from that, actually, I think the whole beauty, the, the whole crown has given me an opportunity to nurture girls or wow. other. And apart from girls working on my own project, living with autism in the society, something that has been, it has been so, it, it has been like part of me for a while, for like five years now since 2012. Because um, uh, when, uh, when I was growing up, there was a child and uh, she went, or rather he went through a lot of stuff because of a uh, disability. And when I was crowned, I was like, this is the opportunity now. At least it has given me, it will give me an opportunity to impact someone. Right. It gives you an opportunity to touch lives. Yeah. You're very passionate about mentoring or rather working with the next um, generation or the yes. people who come behind you. Yeah. Why is that so important? The reason why I really want to work uh, rather to uh, empower other girls, especially girls, it's because most of the time you don't get most of the girls actually they don't get an opportunity. They don't they don't get that mentor who will like work with them through the journey. Some of them they just like, okay, you want to be a model? Yes. You want to be you want to be a doctor? Yes. And just go for it without mm -hmm. knowing like, okay, if it's not all about books. You need those uh, you need you need to know to know to be like a, to know how to carry or rather to know how to be able to deliver your mandates, mm -hmm. just not in terms of books alone, but you can still use your talents, you can still use, use your voice to change your life in many other ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the reason why I'm saying actually girls from humble backgrounds because most of them sometimes they don't believe in themselves. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, since you come from this community, or oh, since you come from this village, there's nothing much you can do. But it also, it, it starts with your mind, it starts with giving them the right channel, Telling them, actually, I can do this. Magdalene, I'm just staring at you because you are definitely gorgeous. You are dripping chocolate. You are dripping oh. what we call me <laughs> melanin. Thank you know. You. What do you feel? Um, or what comes to your mind when you see people on the African continent, women mostly and girls who have become victim to it when they bleach their skin? Um, you know, sometimes it uh, the society actually has given us a very, a very. Uh, difficult way mm. actually it's not actually that is not the word to define beauty the way society perceives beauty it's a totally different thing and it depends on the individual you see uh, with social media right now there are so many girls who are going through a lot of stress and all that because they want to change their skin they want to be like so and so but it it doesn't change anything if you're beautiful you're beautiful yes you can be whatever color you want to be but it doesn't, it's not about your face, it's not about your body, it's not about your hair, it's not about, it, it's how you treat people, it's how you relate with people, it's how you, how focused you are, how smart you are, how, how you can deliver your duties outside there, how can you, how, how, uh, how uh, powerful are you? So how do we begin to start empowering our, our young girls, especially who are beautiful and dark skin toned like you, a lot of them grow up especially being bullied because of their tone? I think... It starts from the parent, mm. it starts from whom. Mm. Once you have a child, just shower them with affection. No matter how uh, I don't, uh, dark, chocolate, uh, brown skin, just tell them they're beautiful. Start from whom. Because you know, sometimes we lack these things because our own parents do not appreciate us. They just they okay, sour, sour. You know, you're not so. You're not like so and so. Even this child is beautiful. Like you know, sometimes they don't give you that. And it's that from the society. And also empowering girls when they're still young, when they're still in school, do not discriminate them. Do not discriminate them. Give them an opportunity. Give them an equal opportunity. Growing you know? up, did you ever feel that um, you wanted to change your own skin tone, or were you always comfortable in your own skin? Actually. I that one has never crossed my mind, but uh, I got bullied a lot when I was young, mm -hmm. when I was growing up. And uh, actually the reason why I did modeling is to um, actually to feel, to, to get that, um, to feel, uh, or rather to, uh, to be part of a community. Mm. Because you know when you're growing up and then you don't get an opportunity to model, or rather to do something that you feel like doing, you want to show people actually that it's for everyone. It's not just for one community, and it's not just for one group of people. So personally, 
till around uh, six, seven years ago, I used to go through a lot. Like even my own friends used to tell me, oh my goodness, I wish, I wish you were a bit lighter, mm -hmm. that your skin and you know, all that. But it has never crossed my mind. I think because of my parents, yeah. Well, tomorrow you're going to give your crown to the next lucky girl. Yeah. After reigning for one year, mm -hmm. what is your advice to young girls and even perhaps men as well who really want to go into the beauty world? But I would love to you to direct that comment, perhaps to those ones who specifically want to go uh, and become a beauty queen like yourself. Um, beauty pageant is a very, or rather, beauty queen. It's not just about the smile. It's not just about the clothes that you wear. It's not just about shoes and, you know, colognes and all that. It takes a lot. It hard, it's hard work. It takes focus. It takes prayers. You have to be dedicated. You have to know what you really want. It's not just being there and just being pretty and smiling all along. So you, for you to be able to be, or rather for you to be able to get where I am right now, to be crowned with South Africa, <laughs> you just have to know yourself better and... Do not be intimidated by people that yeah. oh you're, you're, you know you cannot be miss you, you can't be Miss Africa because you're so you're so and so. Just know what you want. What do you think? What what do you think made you be picked out of all the ladies? What was that winning factor for you? Stand out. Stand out. Yes. Be yourself. Don't copy. Don't be someone else because everyone else is stuck. Wow. That is a fantastic way to end that yeah. conversation. Stand out, be yourself, everyone else is taken. Yeah. Madeline Cheruto, we wish you all the best, even after tomorrow. May you, uh, hopefully that um, your beauty queen and your, your influence will continue to be felt and your impact for sure, from autism to tourism yeah. and, and mentoring young people mm. and other girls. Thank you Thank so you. much for your time this Thank morning. Thank you for having me. Wow, Madeline Cheruto, Miss World Africa 2017. Tomorrow she gives her crown to the next lucky um, girl who will be the next one to become the beauty Right now, we want to make space for hot topics. I can see my panel is here, Smita Stevens and Queen, who has been away. She's wearing a gorgeous yellow dress. Um, right now, we want to take a short commercial break. When we come back, we'll dive into that.